I was looking through some stories of missing women, and I came across this story from Pike County, Kentucky. The last video that I posted was also from Pike County, Kentucky. This is from Unsolved Appalachia. Nancy Ann Lockard. This was updated April the 2nd of 2022. Nancy Ann Lockard, then 33, was last seen June the 24th, 2009 at the home of her late father on Turkey Creek in Belfry, Kentucky. This is in Pike County. She was wearing black sweatpants, a t-shirt, and sneakers of an unknown color. Nancy left behind two sons who her family states she would not have abandoned for anything in the world. After her father passed away a year earlier, she was really devastated. Who wouldn't be after losing a parent? That's one of the hardest things anyone can go through. Her family was worried about her mental health. Nancy's boyfriend, Chris Chenard, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's C-H-O-U-I-N-A-R-D. Was supposed to be the last person to see her before she vanished. The two were reported to have had an argument, after which she left and was never seen again. Pike County and the fire departments in the area looked all through the hills around the home, and specially trained dogs were brought in, but no trace of her was ever found. This is from a family member of hers who was leading the search for her. On the morning of Nancy's disappearance at around 10.30 a.m., she and Chris walked to clarify this, the six-year-old child and Chris, the boyfriend, walked next door to the home of the grandparents of this child to make a phone call. The child says that Chris told them that Aunt Nancy was missing and that was why he was going to use the phone. The child says they never actually saw him use the phone, but the police records show that someone made a call from that number at 11 a.m. Um, I don't know who they called. It doesn't say. I don't know if they called the police, if that was why the police was able to pull up that record to report her missing. Um, I'm not sure about that. The six-year-old, now this is from a, an eyewitness, I'm guessing, that was with them. Could have been one of her kids. I'm not sure. It doesn't really say. It just says the six-year-old did not see did not see them actually use the phone. But Kentucky State Police got a call log indicating that at 11 a.m. was the time of a phone call was made. Roughly an hour after. Chris told the family that Nancy was missing. He and one of his friends returned to her home, backed a van up to the porch, and carried several garbage bags and a rug out of the residence. Sometime after this, the area was searched and the hounds were brought in. Following this, Chris's acquaintance purchased a new van. So, I guess what they're saying is, is that the boyfriend and his friend went to the house where Nancy lived, um, carried out some trash bags and a rug, put them in the back of this van, and not long after this, this friend got rid of the van and bought a new van. Was the old van searched? What happened to that old van? Was it traded in at a dealership? Was it uh, sold? To a private person or was it just junked? It doesn't really say that here. I'm going to keep going. The only album on her still available is an old MySpace account that is titled This Man Beats His Woman and contains a few photos of her with Chris. The writer was unable to view those photos. However, searches on the Kentucky State Police and Pike County Court websites do not yield any results for him so 
I'm guessing that they're saying he's never been arrested in Kentucky or Pike County, Kentucky. Nancy is 5'11", around 130 pounds. She has brown hair and green eyes. She has a tiger tattoo on her right shoulder blade, a butterfly above her right breast, and Brooklyn on her right ankle. It is reported that she had a tongue and navel piercing. She was a tall woman with um, really curly hair. Any information can be called in to the Post 9 State Police Post in Pikeville, Kentucky, 606-433-7711 or the Kentucky State Police Hotline at 1-800-222-5555. And the case number is 9C091201. According to the Kentucky State Police Post 9, emergency personnel Nancy Lockard was reported missing at around 1.30 p.m. Wednesday, according to Kentucky State Trooper Jimmy Nolte. Now, this was in 2009, so I don't know if these troopers are still at this police post. This is from MyDeathSpace.com. This was dated July the 13th, 2009. The last person known to have seen Lockard was her boyfriend. This is from True Crime Missing, Murdered, and Unsolved. Two beautiful young single mothers in Pike County who seem to have left without a trace, disappearing with no footprints left behind. Um, and it's talking about Crystal Branham Hall from Pikeville and Nancy Ann Lockard from the Belfry area, which is about 15 minutes or so from Pikeville. Her mother said she fears that her daughter, she fears for her daughter's mental stability. Lockard had been despondent since her father's death. And she left a message for her two sons who were in her mother's care. She called and left a message at 1.38 and said, Tell her boys that Mommy loves them. Well, you know, that could be something that she just had them on her mind. If she was depressed and upset, if she was going through this... Um, maybe possibly an abusive relationship she said the, the myspace album said this man beats his woman so she was indicating there that she was being abused maybe she did fear for her life maybe he had told her i'm going to kill you and you know in addition to the turkey creek big creek belfry and upper pond creek volunteer fire departments Pike County Emergency Management Service Director Doug Tackett, the State Police and the Pike County Sheriff's Department, along with local volunteers, used all-terrain vehicles to search the hills surrounding her home, as, real, as well as the rest of the Turkey Creek area. Trained dogs were brought in, but they could not find any traces of her trail. Kentucky State Police entered her into the National Crime Information Database. Foul play is not suspected. Well, now keep in mind this was very recent after her disappearance. I would say in the time since she's been gone, and, and I think the general uh, ideology or the general thoughts of the public is, yeah, this was foul play. Her family indicating that she was depressed and despondent and upset called and left a message for her sons to say that she loved them maybe gave the police the idea that she was running away. She had to get away from this abusive man. She had to get away from this area where she was depressed. Um... I'm no expert by any means, but I just give my opinions, and I think that 
people when they are in despair like this, sometimes they do don't they they don't want anyone around them. But many times when somebody's really in a situation of domestic violence, they turn to the people that they know care about them, you know? Was this woman using drugs? Was she was this the lifestyle that she was living? Is this one of the reasons why her mother had her sons? A lot of times when someone is using drugs and is known to have those types of problems, the police kind of, while they don't dismiss this, and I'm not saying that they did because this shows that people were looking for her. The police and the sheriff's department and the local fire departments and local volunteers were taking this serious. They were out in the hills searching, looking for her. So I'm not saying that they dismissed it, but I'm saying that they may have thought, one, she's just run off for a while to get away from this man. She'll show back up. Two, she was using drugs, so maybe she went to uh, the people that she knew, you know, in that lifestyle. These are just some thoughts, and I could be wrong. Um, emergency... Services Director Doug Tackett says authorities feel that she is not in this area and that she may have left on her own. She's an adult and there's no law out there that says that you can't just go away without telling anyone. He added that cell phone records show the last call made by her was made at approximately 1 p.m. Well, her mother says she called and left a message at 1.38 was that the day before or a different day? It says here the last login the last login on Nancy's MySpace account was May the fourteenth, two thousand nine. Five months after a mother disappears without a trace, her family is begging for answers. This was dated November the 13th, 2009. Nancy Lockard has two young sons and her family says she would not just up and leave them. This is a comment from someone. I believe Chris had something to do with this. I also know that one of his other ex-girlfriends was at the house when she went missing. A skinny girl with blonde hair and facial piercings. The family would like to know who this was. They would also like to know who was the driver of the gray van that was seen at Nancy's house that morning. This is a comment on this page that is supposedly from Chris's sister. It says, I'm curious to know who you are and why you feel that it's okay to trash my brother's name all over the internet. If you have proof of anything, then say it right now. Tell me something you know right now. Now, this is a response back to her. And I'm guessing that this was probably from one of her family members. He was the last person to see her, period, and that damn woman that was with him. I will have you know that she has two children that adore her. You and your family make me sick. She sent me a message on MySpace telling me that he beat the F out of her and that she dumped him. Next thing I know, she goes missing. So you tell me, where is she? What do you know and what does your brother know? He will get what's coming to him one day. Maybe not in this lifetime, but he will. Now this was just some comments on these, you know, boards. Um, and here is another response back to the sister. We will say what we choose to say about your brother. Nancy is our family. Your dumbass brother was the last one to see her. He did beat her up and everyone knows it. I saw him two weeks after Nancy disappeared and he wasn't even concerned about her. He was flirting with girls and sm and talking like he didn't have a care in the world. 
I know in my heart that he did something to Nancy. I hope that he ends up in prison. So it's kind of, these are, this is from topics. And these were copied and posted on here. Because topics is a now defunct website that was taken off of the internet. It was kind of a gossip, um, anonymous gossip board where people could go and talk about pretty much anything and anybody without having to give their real name. Someone here is is lashing out at the police saying it sure looks like something happened to her. All the classic signs of abuse. She was telling people in her family and friends that he had abused her and even posted photos on MySpace, and the officers just say she just up and left. This is nonsense. If the police dogs didn't pick up a trail of her, it's probably because she didn't walk away. So that's true. Um, did they bring in search dogs? Did they ever bring in cadaver dogs to search for the scent of death? And keep in mind that if she... I don't know. I, I'm no expert, like I said. But how long does a person have to be deceased before a cadaver dog picks up that scent of of decay of a dead of a dead body? If he killed her in a fit of rage, if they were fighting and he killed her, and then he calls someone up, and within an hour or so, they come and remove her body from that location. Would that scent be there for the dogs to pick up? And like I said, did the dogs ever come? Did they ever bring cadaver dogs? I doubt that they did, because like the police were saying, there's no law that says a, a person cannot walk away and disappear. But it rarely happens. People don't have the resources for that. A woman who has kids. Um, maybe would go away for a week or two weeks or even a few months in order to give some time to pass between her and this abuser to give some time to pass for her to kind of hide out or something. But I doubt that they're just going to disappear without telling anybody. But some people might. I don't know. But why wasn't he brought in and interrogated? Why wasn't he brought in and questioned? Why do some people get dragged in and questioned for hours and hours and hours and others are never brought in and questioned? And I, I will say something. On my videos, you may go back through and watch some of my videos that I've posted. I try to never really disparage the police. But in recent weeks, some of the stories that I've been reading about in, in our region, the Amber Spradlin case that's ongoing in Prestonsburg, Kentucky, this Crystal Branham Hall, Mike Gorley, um, this one that I just did, Valerie Hunt, was missing for two years before her remains were found. Two or three years, but I think two years. Um, they made sure when they talked about her in the newspaper and on the websites, they made sure to remind people that she had been a criminal, that she was um, using meth and had been convicted and was getting ready to face more charges for meth use. And the reason that I included that story in my video was to show people that the police maybe weren't taken it as serious as they might if it was a young mom who just happened to not have any criminal background from a nicer neighborhood or a better family, so to speak. Yeah, I, I'm just giving my opinions here. And um, I just feel like some of the stories that I've been reading about and some experience with the state police says to me, um, maybe some cases are kind of shuffled to the bottom of the stack. That's all I'll say about it.
And like I said, in, in this story, you see that the volunteers in the local fire departments did go out and look for her. So I'm not saying that nobody was taking this serious, but if this man was not, was he was known to be the last person with her, why was he not brought in for questioning? That's just something that I'm curious about. And I'm not saying that he wasn't questioned. But there's a difference between taking someone's statement, taking a police report and get someone's statement, asking them a few questions about where they were and what, what they knew. There's a difference between that and bringing someone into the police station, sitting down with them and asking a lot of questions to the point that they are realizing that they are being considered a suspect. But you know what? To add one more personal thought to that, they're not going to bring anyone in and lead them to believe that they're a suspect if they don't believe that a crime has been committed. So by the uh, Doug Tackett saying it's possible that she just went off on her own, we don't really believe that there's any foul play here, they're not saying that there's a suspect. So there would have been no reason to really, you know, interrogate this man. So basically, that's all I can find on this Nancy Lockard. This just seems to be another one of those cases that just kind of got pushed to the side and grew cold. I don't know if, there, if anyone has reopened this case in recent years or if they have continued to search for her or just consider her a missing person and a cold case. I couldn't find anything updated and um, if I ever do I will do an update um, on this story. Thanks for watching.